In the previous discussions, uh, we talked about universe having a beginning, and the fact that universe has a beginning, it must have a cause, uh, and that this cause is God. We call this cosmological argument. It usually follows, and people usually ask, well, if God created the universe, who created God? So in this short video, we're going to talk about, answer this question, uh, can we ask if God created the universe, who created God? So I will approach this in uh, three ways. The first one is that uh, when we ask the question, who created God, and then we, where do we stop? We have to continue asking, whatever created God, who created that? And then who created that as well? So we can go and ask like this, infinitum. Uh, we call this infinite regression. And, and it is an impossibility uh, that we can go forever. We have to stop somewhere. And, and there has to be a point where something, a cause that is not caused. If I may give an example or, or analogy here, imagine a, a chair which only has two front two legs. It doesn't have the back two legs. And that chair is supported upright by put, putting another chair underneath at the back, which also has the front legs, but it doesn't have the back legs. So in that way, when you put all these chairs which do not have the back legs, you can go forever, but it will still not, uh, it will not still stand up, it will collapse. Unless right at the end, we put a chair that has four legs. And in this way, we have something to stand on the ground. And, uh, and all of those um, many numerous uh, chairs that don't have the back legs can be supported. So this means that uh, when something has a beginning, uh, then something else must cause it. And then that can have a cause, that can have a cause. But ultimately, ultimately there has to be a cause which is not caused. And we call that God. Uh, that, that is that God has to be eternal. Uh, also, another example is that if you put uh, a, a zeros next to one another, you put a zero and another zero, and you can go many trillions of zeros, it still means nothing. Unless you put a one at the beginning, uh, all of those zeros will equate to nothing. And just as one is different to the zeros, God's existence is different to everyone else. So this is the first point. We cannot go forever, we have to stop somewhere, uh, and that, when we stop there, we, we have to say that that entity is not cause, and it's there for forever. So then, how, does, how do we explain God's existence, uh, that, that He can be, exist forever? And I can explain this also in a, uh, by a few examples. Uh, firstly, when we say, uh, where do we get light on earth from? And we say, it's comes from outside, or the sun. Or even when we ask, where does the moon get its light from? We say it's from the sun. Uh, so, but we, we don't ask, where does uh, the sun get its, gets its light from? It's a self-generating uh, entity. It generates its own light. So God is similar to that. We say God is self-existent in that sense. It's a bit hard to understand, but I think these examples bring us bring us to, uh, closer to understanding. Another example I can give is a, is a long train. Uh, the, the last car of the carriage of the train is carried by the, the carriage before it. And in that succession, uh, we go right to the engine car at the beginning. Uh, but at that point, we don't ask ourselves, well, well what pulls the, the engine car? Because the engine's car's pulling comes from itself, and, and through that, uh, the whole train can move. So uh, when we say, if this is created by that, and that's produced by that, and then ultimately God has created everything, that's where we have to stop. So we, we basically have no option. It's either uh, the universe is eternal, or God is eternal. Something has to be eternal. Well, since universe is not eternal, it definitely has a beginning, then it must be that God who has caused the universe to exist 
has to be eternal. And then uh, we don't need to go from causes to causes even beyond that. Uh, uh, and this is the third point. When we explain something completely or in a satisfactory way, uh, we don't have to explain the explanation. Like for instance, if we go, if we go to the moon and we find a, a wreckage of an alien, wreckage of an aircraft or some sort of a spacecraft, which is definitely not NASA or Chinese or Russians, um, then the, it's a very easy to explain that. Uh, the explanation is that an uh, alien spacecraft has crash-landed on the moon. That is definitely a proof for that. It has to come from somewhere because spacecraft is just don't exist on the moon by chance. Uh, so in a similar way, when we find things that are designed, things that are existing in an extraordinary way, almost miraculous, and that explanation of these are, are that uh, God created it, uh, then we don't have to explain God. So this is why the Quran uh, actually focuses on the design proof a lot. Because with design proof, when we look at things that are, uh, we can touch and hold and, and are impossible for them to exist on their own, uh, and then we conclude God exists, uh, then we don't need to go further than that. That's very satisfying to somebody who believes. Um, and for this reason, next video will be on what we call intelligent design. Thank you.